Okay, so we've completed a first read, we've completed a skills lesson, and a close read. The, we've gone over three things with the close read. The close reading process of answering text-dependent questions, the writing process, and the third part of this is the anonymous peer review. Uh, this is a really cool way for students to give each other feedback. I did not utilize this feature as much last year because Alyssa and I primarily worked in Google Classroom. So if you are more comfortable working in Google Classroom, remember that students can complete their rights in Classroom um, very easily, and I'll show you how they do that, or you can have them completed on this platform. It's totally up to you. I'm gonna show you what it looks like to do it on StudySync in case that is appealing to you. So first, I will go through how you would set this up as a teacher, and then I'll show you what it looks like from the student's perspective. Okay. So if we are on StudySync, going back into my unit, back into the instructional path, and let them play God, got this close read, and have this button assign. So I click the assign button whenever I want to assign an assignment to my students. So let's say I'm pushing it out to my Stonehill eighth graders. I change the dates for when I want things to happen. I've got my skills questions. I can attach my access handouts so students can refer to them. And then I also click on my prompt or I change it in here. So I'm gonna focus on this part for right now. All right, so you got that whole part and then you have this peer review. It comes with a default review prompt with some guiding questions. You can keep this default review prompt or you can ask students to give feedback on something more targeted. So say you want them just to look at thesis statements. You would delete all this basically and type in whatever you want students to look at. So maybe you say what specific suggestions can you help to make the writer improve? What did they do well? And was their thesis statement? All right, so students will follow these prompts and then you can also select your rubric. So you can see that there are a whole bunch of different preloaded rubrics here. There's even a thesis statement rubric. Or you can create your own rubric. And I can show you how to do that after this, but for right now, let's just use this default rubric. And you can change the number of reviews requested. So if you want one student to review one other student, or you want each student to review five other students, you just put in that little number and then click create. Okay, your assignment is there. It'll show up in your students' assignments and they'll be ready to go. Now I'm gonna show you what it looks like from a student's perspective. Um, okay. So once again, we have this textual sequence, which looks very familiar. We're actually going to look at the, we're going to look at, how do I get this into full screen? We're going to look at a different, We're going to look at a different text sequence, but it will be the same idea as far as what it looks like to do a peer review from a student's perspective. Okay, so here's the prompt. Students write, write, write. When they're done, they click submit, and it'll say assignment submitted. And now I move on to reviewing my peers' work. You can change the date to give students one or two days to do this. Um, that's up to you. So what will pop up is another student's work. So here, let's say this is my friend's work. I don't know if my friend because it's anonymous. I'm going to read it. And then by following the prompts, I'm going to write my review. So I might say, I really like your use of citing text evidence to support your writing. You might want to use more inferences. I did not see you write about plot, plot development in your response. And then I can also rate it. So this is where the rubric comes in hand. So say these are the three elements of rubric. I give a student a score of one to four. 
depending on the rubric and depending on what you've gone over as a class for what makes a 101 and what makes a 404. The other option is to do this on the Google Doc platform. So if you don't want to do this the way we just went over in StudySync, um, which is really cool, you could also tell students to just open a new Google Doc and share that Google Doc with you and each other if you would prefer to use that platform. Okay, so let's go back to the unit. We've gone over peer review. You've seen it from your perspective and from a student's perspective. Um, and now I'm just going to show you one more thing that I included in this lesson. And this is a strategy from Kelly Gallagher's book, right like this, for setting a purpose for revision. So if you click on this link, this is a cool way to teach revision to your students. Um, it's a strategy called radar and basically Kelly Gallagher sets a purpose for revision by showing them a picture of his house before Renovations and after renovations and students are asked to see, you know, what did renovations mean exactly? What what did a revision do and it will lead them to the conclusion that well the house is the same it just looks a little bit different it is reimagined and it got that way through different revisions. So if you play a game with students, they can find up to 19 different revisions, including like a driveway, different paint. There are 19 that they can find. So it's kind of a cool game. Um, and then he shows them this radar strategy. So every time a student goes through the revision process, they do R, replace, add, delete, and reorder. So this is a tool that you can use with your students in the revision process if you so choose.